Aloha and welcome to the fourth module of the Eyes of the Reef online training program. Thanks for being here and for taking the time to learn more about how you can help protect Hawaii's coral reefs. This module will describe the types of diseases impacting Hawaii's corals and other marine organisms and how to identify them. If you have questions during or after the training, please reach out to your local island coordinator for more information. Free training materials are available for you or your class, including underwater guides and training booklets. Please reach out to your local island coordinator to find your nearest pickup location. Contact information is available on our website at eorhawaii.org slash contact us. In this module, you will learn how to recognize possible disease lesions on corals and other marine organisms. You will also learn the key characteristics of potentially serious forms of coral disease. Occasionally, diseases have been found in other reef invertebrates or on reef fish. You will finally learn how to identify and report these types of diseases to the Eyes of the Reef Network. There are many factors that can cause disease in corals. Environmental stressors that can cause coral disease are known as abiotic or non-living factors. These drivers can include changes in seawater salinity, sedimentation events from local watersheds or dredging activities, eutrophication or increased nutrient inputs, or rapid changes in seawater temperatures. Coral disease can also be caused by exposure to certain pollutants or toxic chemicals. In some more highly degraded areas, corals may experience multiple abiotic stressors concurrently. The presence of these environmental stressors can also lower a coral's immunity or ability to resist disease, allowing a disease-causing pathogen to overcome the coral's immune defenses. Diseases are also caused by a bio biotic agent or living organism and can include viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, or cyanobacteria. In some cases, more than one biotic agent is involved in causing a disease infection. Coral disease can present itself in a variety of forms and with varying rates of infection and spread across a coral colony. Often coral diseases are contagious from colony to colony and therefore management response can be a difficult challenge. Early detection is a critical step in responding to coral disease and your reports to the Eyes of the Reef Network can help ensure an early response by reef managers. Even for scientific researchers, Identifying specific pathogens can be a difficult challenge and requires extensive sampling and laboratory analysis. The field of coral disease research has grown rapidly in recent decades and our understanding of the role of various types of pathogens is steadily improving. Coral disease is not always caused by a single pathogen and in some cases coral disease causing agents can be multi-species. For example, Montipora black band disease seen in the upper right image, emerges as a microbial mat, including multiple types of bacteria and photosynthetic cyanobacteria. Today, there are more than 30 types of coral diseases recognized globally, but don't worry, for this training course and for the Eyes of the Reef reporting, you will only need to be able to recognize three types of disease lesions in order to submit a report. You will need to be able to identify three main types of disease lesions to submit an Eyes of the Reef report. Discoloration diseases, growth anomalies, and percussive tissue loss diseases. Discoloration diseases result in a change in coral tissue color and include pruritus trematodiasis, which will be described on the next slide. The second type of disease lesions is growth anomalies, with examples shown in the lower right. Growth anomalies appear as bumps or raised areas of the coral skeleton and tissue, often with a smooth texture and pale color compared to the rest of the colony. The third type of disease lesion is progressive tissue loss. The coral diseases that produce these types of lesions are the most severe and can result in rapid coral tissue loss in some cases. While corals can often survive long-term with the other two disease lesions, progressive tissue loss diseases can cause severe harm to corals. 
Therefore, it is important to submit a disease report to the Eyes of the Reef Network if you think you are observing this condition in your area. Examples of prog progressive tissue loss diseases include Montipara black band disease, Montipara white syndrome, and Paritis tissue loss disease. Paritis trematodiasis is a common disease that results in numerous small pink bumps across the coral surface. This disease occurs on smooth finger coral, or Paritis compressa, and on smooth mounding coral, or Paritis lobata. These pink bumps are only about one quarter of an inch in diameter and are frequently clustered together. Trematodiasis is caused by a parasitic infection by a trematode, or flatworm. The parasite uses the coral as an intermediate host and the coral feeding butterfly fish as their final host. Butterfly fish get the infection when they consume infected coral polyps. The parasite then lives in the butterfly fish's intestines and coral becomes infected when the fish releases parasitic eggs with their feces. The larval parasite embeds in the coral tissue causing the raised pink bumps. Infected corals have reduced growth, but usually little tissue loss over time. This disease is therefore not considered to be a serious threat to Hawaii's corals. A less common disease that creates coral tissue discoloration is Pavona endolithic hypermycosis. This disease is caused by the infection and overgrowth of a certain type of fungus that grows within the coral tissue. This fungal infection results in dark maroon colored patches across the coral colony surface. This disease isn't known to cause widespread coral damage, but is currently poorly understood. When observing your local reef for possible disease, you may observe the condition shown above. Coral colonies with irregular mottled pink sections of tissue. Please note that this condition is not a discoloration disease. It's the result of irritation to the coral, most often caused by certain types of algae contacting the coral tissue. Depending on the extent of the algal irritation and overgrowth, a coral can usually recover from this condition once the irritation subsides. Coral growth anomalies are described as irregularly shaped growths along the coral surface and are most commonly found on rice coral, finger coral, smooth mounding coral, and plate and pillar coral. The causal agent of this disease is currently unknown, although the growths have been associated with human stressors, including population density, elevated nutrient concentrations, and the presence of freshwater inputs, including submarine groundwater discharge. Recent studies have shown that while growth anomalies do not cause widespread coral damage, they can result in reduced growth, reproductive output, and some coral mortality. The third category of coral diseases you might observe on the reef are the progressive tissue loss diseases, which can lead to more severe loss in coral cover and should be reported to the Eyes of the Reef Network. Paritis tissue loss syndrome, or TLS, is a type of progressive tissue loss disease that is fairly common around the Hawaiian Islands, affecting smooth mounding or finger coral. This disease can be recognized by looking for a typically round or circular lesion with a leading edge of bare white coral skeleton. As the disease advances, algae colonizes any exposed skeleton within several days. So often algal turf is visible where the disease has already passed by as shown in the center of this example on the smooth mounding coral on the right. Where the disease is actively advancing along a colony, the coral tissue might be pink or white and coral mucus might also be visible around the leading edge. While this disease often progresses slowly and seasonally, it can result in a permanent loss in coral cover. Another type of progressive tissue loss disease is Montipara white syndrome, which only affects rice coral. This disease can be observed throughout the Hawaiian Islands, and recent outbreaks have been observed on Oahu and Maui. To recognize this disease, look for well-defined areas of coral tissue loss, revealing intact white coral skeleton. 
Older sections of exposed skeleton are often covered in turf algae. Several bacterial pathogens have been identified that can cause progressive tissue loss disease. Unfortunately, once established, Montipora white syndrome can move across a coral colony rapidly, resulting in partial to complete mortality. Because of the rapid rate of spread and potential coral loss associated with this disease, it's important that you quickly, quickly report any suspected case of Montipora white syndrome to the Eyes of the Reef network. Montipora black band disease is another less common type of progressive tissue loss disease and is the final specific disease we'll cover in this training. This disease can target all types of rice corals, including red rice corals shown here. This disease was first observed in Hawaii on Kauai in 2004, with a severe outbreak reported in 2012 along the North Shore. Researchers identified the lesions as black band disease which is caused by a microbial consortium of filamentous cyanobacteria, sulfate-reducing bacteria, and sulfide-oxidizing bacteria. It is found worldwide. In Hawaii, it has only been reported on Kauai. Because of the potentially rapid rate of spread of this disease, it's important that you report any possible case to the Eyes of the Reef Network. As you've seen a few times already in this module, Progressive tissue loss diseases have a consistent pattern of spreading across a coral colony. Being able to recognize this distinctive pattern is the key to recognizing possible cases of disease as you survey your local reef. In the image above, healthy rice coral is seen on the right and has normal reddish brown coloration. In the center of the image, you can see the active disease front. In this case, slight coral tissue sloughing and coral polyp retraction is present just in front of the line of the disease infection. On the left side of the image, bare coral skeleton remains where the disease has already passed by. Note that exposed skeletal structures are white and intact. On the far left, you can see the start of greenish brown algal growth, which has started to colonize the exposed coral skeleton. This algal growth becomes progressively thicker depending on how long the coral skeleton has been bare. For diseases that are spreading rapidly, you will see large sections of white exposed coral skeleton. While this may feel like a lot to remember, keep in mind that as you practice observing corals, you will develop an eye for recognizing these signs of disease progression. Very rarely, other types of marine diseases have been observed in the Hawaiian Islands and were reported to the Eyes of the Reef Network. These reports have included possible disease in other types of invertebrates and certain species of reef fish. Disease is a normal component of all living organisms at your local reef, including marine invertebrates. The majority of invertebrate diseases have not been defined or described. Signs of invertebrate disease can include one, numerous empty shells or tests in a small area, two, unusual spine loss, tissue sloughing, or lesions in a group of same species individuals, and three, numerous individuals showing similar disease signs in a localized area. Please note that spine loss in sea urchins is very common, and for a low number of individuals, in one area is very likely natural mortality. Please only report urchin or invertebrate disease if more than 10 individuals with disease-like signs are observed. Although not commonly observed, fish disease occurs occasionally in the Hawaiian Islands. Similar to possible diseases of reef invertebrates, many of these diseases have not been defined or described. Signs of possible fish disease can include one, abnormal growths that are tumor-like in appearance, two, severe parasitic infections on the skin or fins, three, unusual or erratic behavior resulting in increased exposure, four, sudden high numbers of floating or dead or dying fish of the same species, or five, sudden high numbers of same species fish washing on shore in a localized area. 
Remember that a fish can die of natural causes and injuries due to fishing are common in some areas. Please only report fish disease to the Eyes of the Reef Network if more than five individuals of the same species are showing similar signs of disease at your reef site. If you would like to learn more about marine diseases and how to recognize them, please visit our website for more information and for links to other great resources available to you. This concludes Module 4 of the Eyes of the Reef Network online training program. Mahalo for your participation. Next, you will be required to successfully complete a short review quiz to move on to the next module. Okay, question one. Stressful environmental conditions, including pollution and abnormally high temperatures, can lower a coral's immune defenses, A for true or B for false. If you selected A for true, you are correct. Question two, what types of biotic agents can cause coral disease? Is it A, viruses, B, bacteria, C, fungi, or D, all of the above? If you said D, all of the above, you are correct. Question three, what coral condition is shown in the image? Is it A, progressive tissue loss disease, B, algal overgrowth, C, coral bleaching, or D, none of the above? If you said A, progressive coral tissue loss disease, you're correct. Question four, what coral condition is shown in this image? Is it A, coral bleaching, B, coral growth anomalies, C, white syndrome, or D, none of the above? If you said B, coral growth anomaly, you're correct. Question five, what coral condition is shown in this image? Is it A, coral bleaching, B, paritis, or smooth finger coral, trematidiasis? Is it C, coral growth anomaly, or D, none of the above. If you said B, parietes trematidiasis, you're correct. Okay, last question. Report an incidence of invertebrate disease when you see A, five or more individuals with the condition, B, 10 or more individuals with the condition, C, any number of individuals with the condition, or D, at least 25 individuals with the condition. If you said B, 10 or more individuals with the condition, you're correct. How did you do on the quiz? If you missed more than a few questions, you might want to go back and review the materials in this module before moving on to the next module. Mahalo for your participation in the Eyes of the Reef online training program. In the next module, you will learn more about crown of thorns sea star aggregations and blooms and their impact on coral reefs.